Vertical wood is so important for attracting birds to your habitat. So if you don't have big trees yet, this is a great option for you. And even though I have big trees, this is proven to be an amazing way to get a better look at woodpeckers, nuthatches, brown creepers, and all the birds love to perch on top, hide seeds inside the bark, and just generally play on it. So I'm a firm believer that your habitat should be enriched for bird enjoyment enjoyment and this is a surefire way to have birds stick around in your yard. This is the wood that I found yesterday. So you can see there's some big branches that will be ideal for perching and photo ops. And then there's also these fatter pieces that are decayed wood. So um, they're going to actually be the right size possibly for about nuthatch, uh, red-breasted nuthatch to excavate for nesting. Um, and so it's, you know, it's tricky in the city because there aren't these kinds of things standing. So if you can manage to find one and install it, then you've just created a natural nesting habitat for smaller cavity nesting birds. You can also buy wood from a place like a firewood company and just get the logs before they cut them. And that's what I did from a great place called Down Under Landscaping in Spruce Grove. Uh, but what you have to keep in mind is that fresh wood is so much heavier than a decayed snag that you might find uh, in a place where you would be allowed to take it from. Um, but what you have to look for is the species. So birch is highly attractive and that is hard to to find. So I bought my log. As you can see, this is a really big one attached to my fence. Now, of course, something this big cannot just go anywhere. So safety is always going to be your number one concern. So we've got this in a corner. It is sitting on the ground for the support so that the weight is not supporting the, um, the sorry, the fence is not supporting the weight vertically as well. And then it is drilled from the back in about 10 spots with really long screws to keep it secure in its spot. This one has been extremely popular. Smaller bot logs are going to be obviously not as heavy. This one though is still a decent weight, but it is thin enough that I was able to free mount in the middle of the yard. I had to dig down a couple of feet down into the ground. And then you can see I've got this metal bracket that's about four feet long, pounded into the ground, and that it's also drilled into that to make sure it does not fall over. What we've got behind me is where I used to have a nest box. Uh, house wrens did use it last year, but it's never been a super popular spot for the chickadees and the nuthatches, which are my priority species because they're a little bit trickier to get into a nest box. So I did end up moving boxes for them to, see, uh, to places where they've already been checking them out quite a bit, and it is January. Um, but behind me, I still have the post spike in the ground. So I'm gonna be attaching these snags to a four by four post in, t in that uh, post spike and I'm going to give you a closer look at this area that's kind of looking a little bit empty right now. So the reason I'm focusing on this spot, it's a little bit empty. It's my Amher cherry is here. It's got a ways to go before it's going to be big. Um, otherwise, that little caragana in the back is not going to get bigger than that. And I did already put a branch on the fence for perching, but otherwise everything down here is really low. So I would love to have some more vertical interest for the birds over here. Um, I've got some driftwood where they've got some shelter. There's some red osier dogwood. I've got a bunch of native plants in here like nodding onion, tall lungwort. Um, I, I know I added two other ones here and I can't even remember the tall meadow where I knew is, is a little bit farther away, but I'm trying to think of what are the two that I added here. I'm gonna have to check that out. But, uh, oh yeah, and we also have a nice little shrub here that's native. It's a buckbrush coral berry. You know, the berries are not very attractive to birds, but the flowers are an absolute pollinator magnet. So let's make this more vertically interesting. Before we start, I have to give a huge shout out to my friend Andrew in Calgary at Birds and Bees YYC because if I hadn't seen what he'd been doing in his yard with uh, snags that he'd installed for nesting flickers and downy woodpeckers, I never would have thought of bringing something like this into my yard because my trees are all healthy 
and so I don't have any snags. He's in a newer neighborhood where there isn't as many mature trees. So this was his solution, which has worked amazing. Um, he also showed me a great product I'm gonna take a picture of that's gonna help me install these snags. So let's get to work. Okay, so the four by four post is into the deck, sp <laughs> deck spike post. Does that even sound right? Uh, so this uh, post was maybe like two and a half feet long. Uh, you don't need to make it super, super high, but you need to make it tall enough that it's going to support, uh, you know, a big part of the length of the snag that you have. Um, I just have a little plastic shim in there because I find that the posts are not always straight. And if this isn't straight, your snags aren't going to be straight. So um, you want to make sure that you've got this part down before you move on to the next step. Okay, so this is that amazing product I was telling you about. It is uh, galvanized strapping. So basically, it is a metal strip that you can cut to size and then drill in to hold things together. So I use that for this one where I put it in two places and of course always uh, touching the ground so the weight is not being supported only by the fence post. You wouldn't want to do this just to a fence board obviously because that would not be stable enough. But uh, I love this perch already and I can't wait to see. I'm wondering actually if my saw wet has been on it at all yet, but it's not enough light for me to see in the house at night. Okay, so I have my lovely husband assistant helping me. He's holding up the log so I can videotape this. Um, as you can see the strapping, I put it in starting on the post. Um, I started at the top, it doesn't really matter, um, with a deck screw. So now that I've gone onto this side of the deck post, I'm gonna wrap it all the way around um, and get it around the two posts, uh, sorry, two snags so they're attached to the post. And after going all the way around, I screwed it back in over top of the one that was already there. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm going to drill from the strapping into the snags in a few spots. So now that I have one in, my husband can hold the camera instead of the post together while I work. Uh, I started with one piece of stripping going around again, and then I'm going to cut through it using wire cutters and the stuff is pretty tough. So you have to really squeeze, my hands are kind of frozen, until you can bend it back and forth and get it loose. Uh, always go with some extra length because the worst is when you don't have enough and then have to take it out and do a whole new strip. So I'm gonna keep going around until I have this really nice and secure. Okay, so I love it and I'm super excited about it. Um, I ran out of screws, so I'm gonna just boot over to Home Depot and I'm going to put one more round of strapping on that just to make sure it's 100% stable. It feels really solid right now, but I figure it couldn't hurt. So um, I'm gonna finish that later. The next part I'm gonna do is uh, increasing my fake dead tree, which is what I'm gonna show you next. Okay, fake dead tree, what am I talking about? So you are looking uh, behind me at, you'll see a big dead branch stretching up to the left. That is a favorite perch for western wood peewees to hunt from. Western wood peewees only hunt from dead wood. So dead wood is an integral part of your habitat. That tree does not belong to me. I have no idea how long it's going to be there. So I am trying to recreate a dead tree in my yard so that when the western wood peewees come back, they're not wondering where their favorite perch went. All right, this is what I have so far. I already love it. Um, these branches are attached to my pergola, but where I was struggling was that I didn't come across anything that was tall enough to recreate the height of the tree that I just showed you that belongs to my neighbor until yesterday. So I'm adding one more branch to this and I'm hoping that's gonna put the fi finishing touch on my fake dead tree. Right, the thing about when you find uh, branches like this, when they're older and really dried out, you would not believe how light they are. So mounting these kinds of things, uh, just even like the snags I showed you, they are incredibly light. You, you really aren't gonna believe it until you try and pick one up yourself. The fresher the wood, the heavier it's gonna be. So I'm actually going to add this branch right here to my dead tree, and it's really light as a feather. Well, maybe not quite. All right, 
I'm very excited about this. Um, I just know that this is just going to be a mega hotspot for birds and I think that it is now tall enough and big enough and fake looking, well no, real enough looking that a western wood pea would use this. Of course, I'm not going to know the answer to that until probably the end of May. <laughs> Look at that. Of course, predictably, a house sparrow was the first one to want to try it out. Um, I used the same uh, strapping that I used to put in the snags and I drilled it into the pergola, into the branches that were already there, and I also put a really long screw through the branch into the pergola. That thing is not going anywhere. It is super secure. I hope this motivates you to keep enriching your habitat. If you think about it, um, animals and birds in wildlife rehabilitation, while they're there healing, a big part is enriching their habitat. Think about the same way for your yard. The birds and animals are going to stick around if they have something to do there, if they have places to explore, places to nest, places to cache food. So keep that in mind and keep working on your habitat. You can follow me on Instagram at habitat underscore Y-E-G, or you can check out my website at www.habitatyeg.com. So if you like this, hit subscribe and you'll be the first to know when I put out a new video.